fans, RC fans, Racing 393 here again for another video, part two of my M05 chassis by Tamiya um, hop up build. So, leading off from like yesterday's or the last video, part one, we got up to the building the chassis and the gearbox, um, pretty much to standard kit form at the moment. And the only upgrade I put on there were the gears, the bull diff, and the servo mount. So we're now on to step seven, which includes my first upgrade from Yeah Racing um, regarding the wishbones, uh, lower wishbones, top links. sort of the uh, steering knuckles on the front of the car. Um, as you can see these are purpose-built um, aluminium, high-grade aluminium parts. And you've got these here as well, that's the steering knuckles. It does look, it looks fairly easy and a lot more complex than just the standard lower wishbones you get with the kit. Um, so I'm going to assemble them together then I'll come back, hopefully, with an, uh, at least a semi-assembled unit to show you how it fits. So here we are, um, probably getting on now for 45 minutes or 50 minutes later, and I've assembled one side. I'm not 100% sure whether this is um, correct. Um, It, it did go together. I mean, the machining is really, really good. Um, I couldn't use my titanium suspension pins, not for these ones. They had their own suspension pins. They sort of fit into a tapered hole, if you like. Um, what else? Yeah, it's, it's very, it is very fiddly and, and the instructions a, a sort of for people that have got really good eyesight. I mean, I I can barely read what it says, um, and it's not completely clear if I've done it right. There's a few things I'm not sure about, like you know, there's some flanges in there which to me would make sense to go the other way. But I've put it in the way that the instructions have said. It does seem to work. I mean, you can see here, you know, it's, it's on there. It's a very technical piece of kit. It's almost over-engineered over for what it's for, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I've decided to upgrade it. I think everything is on correctly. I'm sure some people that know more about this than I do will probably think, oh it's not the right way and, and this this um, suspension is the extended version so it says long span suspension arms which then points me to the drive shafts on the front I'm not sure if they're long enough so there may be some more parts I might have to buy I know they do universal joint upgrade for this so that could be an option um, but I need to I'm going to assemble it first, obviously, and finish it, then go from there. So I've done one side, as you can see, very nice. So it shouldn't take me 50 minutes. I was working it all out, but I'm going to do the other side, and then I will there be right back. That was an that's another hour. It wasn't too difficult. I'm not, I'm not totally convinced that it's done correctly. Um, being, I'm not that familiar with the MO5 touch, um, chassis by Tamiya. These upgrades are completely alien to me. So even building the kit in its stock form would have been a learning curve. Um, so there's a lot of bits I've actually bought hop-up items, which this these uh, yeah racing kind of over overall. So they've got the sp specific things that you use for this upgrade and the sort of the standard Tamiya hop-up items don't fit. For example, the, uh, uh, the chassis pins, um, things like
things like that are the, the low friction king pings, which look would be a much better solution, but they don't fit this um, kit. So ultimately, I think what will happen is once I've built it and I've got it running, I'll see what's left over. I'm planning to sell the majority of the MO5 stock kit, but it will have some hop up options with it. So I'll um, that will be in due course towards the end of my um, my journey. Um, I'm still not convinced that this is actually correct. Um, yeah, it, it, it feels all right. It runs really, really smooth. But I'm, I'm unsure of a how, it, how it all fits together. You know, there's certain things on here which may not actually work. You know, there's shock absorbers. Are you supposed to go on these these pins here? But I, I just don't know I mean, until I've built it. Those that have are going to have a much better understanding. So I would also recommend, I haven't done it yet, that the screws that you use to sort of bolt this together are Loctited. You wouldn't want to be losing any of this because that would be that. It tends to from right down to the tools used to put them together. I haven't got any tools, so I've had to dig out a really kind of small hex, hex key, um, which is the only thing I've actually got ever that fit all these, which you can probably see on there hopefully, which you can't look like they, they sort of fit these here, so yeah. Anyway, onwards and upwards, I think we're back to the standard Tamiya instructions now, so, um, oh, um, all the way, by the way, I've been using old school technology, as you do, so I've been using an old, I say an old, it's not that old, but uh, a vernier calipers to sort of measure the top links, so I've done it on the old school, which is, uh, you know, that's me all over, anyway, oh, onwards tick. and upwards. Um, I didn't realise that all these all these things you buy, you don't realise what's in them really. So as you can see here, we've got um I don't know if you can see that. So we've got uh, an upgraded drive shaft, like a universal joint, which I was mentioning. So the stock version is just a dog bone, which fits, fits fine. I mean, although I was a bit dubious, but I've put the new one in. Um, and it's yeah, so it fits absolutely fine. It's actually probably not a lot different actually to be honest. So um, yeah, we're going to fit these in. They're a bit hard to take these um, track camber links off because they're quite stiff. But yeah, we're going to fit these in and we're going to go from there. Here we are. This always is learning. I'm quite perplexed. So you're now talking to someone who's. Yeah, I do know. I'm always learning. So RC racing and RC building cars. I, t I would like to sort of hold my own with people. There's lots of information that I may not be aware of, but I'd like to think I know enough um, racing all my life so caster camber Ackerman, you know corner weights although it might be sometimes difficult to put into words on a video online you know, I'm sat there in the car driving it I kind of know what it needs now I've upgraded my M05 chassis I've only worked on the front at the moment so we've got a complete front upgrade it just does not seem correct for me I'm going to show you. I might have to move the camera here if I can. So you can see there that it's it has been upgraded. We've got the front hubs, bottom wishbones, um, track control arms, steering, which is there, um, tow links, and the top. As you can see, that the top. Top wishbone adjustment, so you can the camber can be the camber adjustment. But looking at that, it just looks wrong. I mean, I don't because I've never owned one of these. It, it to me, it, it tends to want to sit higher. But the angle of these here, from the bulkhead to the top of the um, what do you call these um, hubs, hub carriers? I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? I know not many people comment on my videos, 
Um, but I'm asking you now, what's, what have I done wrong? Have I done anything wrong? Doesn't, I follow the instructions, but surely that, that, that arm there, I mean, it's not sitting where it should sit. The shocks ain't on there, it's not on the floor. I'm guessing it might sit more like that with the wheels on there. As, as a, but you know, the wishbones then would be negative, but up. I don't know, it, it feels great. I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels absolutely superb, but it just doesn't look right. And even if it sits up like that, look at the uh, top top link. Surely not. All right, I might be able to, actually I can probably put that above, there's a pin above that, which that would help, which I might do. I've just noticed there's another adjustment there. I don't know if you can see that, it's dark at the moment. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, then that stage, in the manual stage 10, there's gonna to be tons of stuff left over. So, when I get rid of this kit, there's gonna be, it won't be a complete kit, but you can have loads in there. Um, so stage 11's putting the motor in. I'm not gonna do that now, I'm gonna skip that. It might even be the rear, rear suspension. But uh, what a piece of engineering. You wouldn't wanna damage this. Um, but anyway. Let me know what you think. If I don't, if I don't say mega wrong, or is it just something I'm not aware of? Anyway, see you on the next bit. So what I've done at the moment is um, I changed the top link camber links to a higher standpoint, so that's that's levelled them out a little bit. Uh, it does look a little bit better. It sort of generates tow out on turns, but it, these need adjusting. This the track control arms need adjusting. So the next bit is actually putting the motor in. So I may as well show you the motor I'm intending to use. So we've got a rather special Reedy modified KR. So that stands for Krypton. I can't read that. What's about my eyesight? Krypton. I don't actually know how many turns it is. I think it's a double. But it's in very, very good condition. It's almost brand new. So it's probably gonna be mental for this, for this front wheel drive car. So um, anyway, we're gonna put that in. Uh, I'm not sure what size pinion yet, but um, we'll get that installed. That gets it off my shelf and we'll go from there. Right, onwards oh, and again. As far I'm, as I'm gonna to get today, the next stage is the shock absorbers, which are here. These ones, I've got obviously got four. Just low friction, uh, they're suitable for four wheel drive, front wheel drive, rally car type of thing. So we've got these to go on. So that'd be my next task. I'll build all four up probably in one go. So the fronts, it's not done, but I'm going to show you what I've done so far. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, it's got the toe and the track it definitely needs to be sorted out. There's, there's not, uh, there's no, there's, I haven't adjusted any of that yet. But that's a sort of, as far as I think I could go with the front without putting the shocks on. Um, I put the front wheels on. I, mean, I must admit, I think I put one on the wrong way around in my haste and speed to get them on there. I, I, I will change that to another tire. Just my OCD will kick in. Um, the, 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 the motor is meshed, it feels alright, I mean I'm just thinking, should it be easier to push than that? Um, I don't know, it's a very, really, uh, with this MM05 chassis you, you haven't got any vision on the gears which is a real pain, so you've got two screws here. And I've got a, a, a 20, 20 tooth hardened steel pinion, so the standard would be 19. You're limited to what pinion you can put on because of the motor mount, it's only so big because the pinion won't fit through, or you've got to put the motor on one half of the gearbox with it split, a real pain. Unless the, the aluminium upgrade has got a bigger hole to take the bigger pinions, I, I haven't looked into that. But then when, obviously when the 
I say obviously, but when you've got the motor in there, and I might have to even rotate that because I've got the wires the wrong way around. They're kind of near the steering knuckles, uh, the track control arms. But I, I don't, you've got no way of telling where that should be. So, there's, you know, there's not even a little cubby hole where you can spy. You know, they put a little like catch or may, maybe made that bit there clear. I don't know. Maybe all that half the gearbox because that's part of the, the uh, chassis. But anyway, that's really really. If you want a most Tamiya kits are fairly straightforward to build, and I find if you want something a little bit more challenging, then upgrade it. Get some aftermarket bits. There's many companies out there. Yeah, Racing do loads of aftermarket bits for. Um, most Tamiya cars and so on. I mean, I'm just, as I can say, I'm not, I'm no means sponsored by any stretch. I had to pay for these, but it's pretty well over. I think I mentioned it on another video. 200, no, But yeah, um, sorry about that. The um, <coughs> camera decided to turn itself off before I finished. So what I was trying to say was is how much I've spent on the car in upgrades, just to sort of give you an idea of perhaps it's never, um, a cheap option, but it does give you uh, a lot of satisfaction. You know, this car, it's, it's not an easy build because it's not stock, so some things don't quite, they're not as easy to work out where they fit as if it were just following the Tamiya instructions, for example. So, as you can see here, um, uh, the car, it's, it's, I'll put the body shell on just to give it some sort of scale, scalability, if you like. Um, yeah, it, you can see that the wheels, <clears throat> the sort of the one tenth style of wheel, sort of tucking, they sort of fit the wheel arches really well. Not, you know, obviously you don't have to sort out the height and you know, the mounting the body. But the next stage, as you can see here, is that we're going to start to build. I mean, I've only really got time to start one of these today, and as you can see, that's the. Uh, low friction aluminium damper set which I'll, I'll make a pair up and because the front suspension is on there I will mount it on the front at some point that will probably be in the next next video to be honest um, and I've got a selection of oils by Tamiya ranged from hard medium and soft so that was the medium they, call, they come in packs and there's the hard set so these, the, the, the oils and the shock absorbers here um, uh, are in my eBay shop. So I will add a link in the description of this video if you want to have a look at those. Um, right, so I think that is about it for now. Um, Yeah, so uh, the, ne the next video, I'll uh, we'll go through the building of the the shock absorbers. So that's the end of part two, and I'll see you very soon for part three. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and a bye for now.